The sentence worked on in this clip was a bit more tricky. Technically, it wasn't incorrect, but without some context, it didn't really mean anything. I decided that the best way to work on it was to suggest that the student add an adverb, so I offered souvent as one possibility. Later in the course, I probably would have pushed the student to add her own context. Je regarde mon téléphone. Ah, uh -huh. alors, il faut rajouter des choses. Alors. Je regarde mon téléphone. Ça va comme ça mmh. Mmh, Ok, bien. Mmh. Encore une fois euh, Je regarde ce, ce grand mon téléphone. Mmh. Mmh. Je, 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 regarde mon, euh, je regarde ce grand mon téléphone. Mmh. Encore une fois Je regarde mon téléphone. Je regarde ce bon mon téléphone. Ok, alors vas-y. Je regarde ce bon mon téléphone. Mm -hmm. D'accord, vas-y. Je regarde ce bon mon téléphone. D'accord. Je regarde ce bon mon téléphone. Okay. Je regarde ce bon mon téléphone. Je regarde ce bon mon téléphone. The work on this sentence, and particularly the word souvent, a word I already knew started to inform me of the range of experience that the orange rod on the arrow might stand for, and the sentence with the word souvent sounded much better. For me, the work with the abacus meant that these kinds of melodic shapes must be required if we are to sound French. The abacus was in fact an experiment for me. It was one of the first times I've actually used it in a course, and the student wasn't used to it, and so didn't quite know how to respond. With hindsight, I could have worked better too when I offered the word souvent. It would have been more effective to spend more time pointing the first few sounds like this, s and then wait, then u and wait, then, if necessary, v and wait. That would have given the students time to think and find the word for themselves. I find that it's always better for the teacher to do less and allow the students to do more, as much as they can, for themselves.